right now in the Arctic, see polar bears emerging from their winter dens. In Borneo, meet Jane Galdacas, age 10, who's helping orphaned young orangutans. Enter weird cyberspace with Matthew Harding to look into the eyes of a giant tarantula. And join Jersey girl Eleanor Nugent, who's investigating wild lemurs in Madagascar. For the next 25 minutes, using technology in ways that have never been possible before, explore the amazing world of animals on The Web. That was the opening sequence for a new children's wildlife programme. The Web is the first of its kind in a new era, an era of interactive multimedia programme making, for which the BBC is uniquely placed to lead the way. Our idea was to create something which would allow children from all around the world to link up with each other and share their enthusiasm for wildlife. First and foremost, it was going to be an interactive television programme. Secondly, it was going to be a highly sophisticated internet site. Following this, we hope to create CD-ROMs, video games, books, anything that the modern world of multimedia would allow. Sounds like science fiction? Well, take a look at what we achieved in the first two pilot programmes that were broadcast recently on BBC One. We teamed up with TV New Zealand to share the experiences of a young Maori girl caring for some of the world's rarest penguins. We travelled to Borneo to film orangutans and meet 11-year-old Jane Galdicas. After the programme, we arranged a global link-up for viewers to speak to Jane. With the help of the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds, we formed a brand new club, the Birdmaster Club, accessible in a number of ways. Here's my address on the web. You can also contact me by email at this address. Children sent in home videos about their favourite animals. We broadcast some and put others on the internet. Hi, my name's Robin Judson and I'm really wild about birds. We journeyed into an amazing micro world. Watch this. And the whole programme was linked from a fantastical child-friendly world, created using the latest video effects in a virtual studio. Down there is a big spider. Combining images using chroma key is well established in broadcast television, but the virtual studio is a new concept in the field of blue screen recording techniques. It allows a freedom of camera movement not possible with previous systems. BBC engineers have designed sensors on the camera head and zoom controls which can be used to manipulate images via a digital video effects device. As the camera zooms and pans around the set, the background images follow its movement in real time. Well, Voitech shouldn't be lonely for much longer because the storks that did migrate are on their way back right now from Africa to Boschvinka. And here comes the web wizard. In addition, advanced computer graphic workstations were used to create the program's fantastical sets. It's just an orangutan! Background images selected from the Natural History Unit's extensive library were combined with a true 3D computer model of the web to stunning effect. Virtual sets offer a whole new world of creativity for programs like the web. You can take a presenter and place them in any kind of image you dream up in your head. And as a director, that's a very exciting thought because you can do all sorts of things that you've never been able to do before. Probably the most famous place in the world for saving endangered animals is Britain's Jersey Zoo. Now, one of the major benefits of using a virtual studio for the web is that it opens up opportunities for co-producers that aren't always possible with presenter-led programmes. And although not all broadcasters will have access to such sophisticated gadgetry, the BBC can lead the way to share the technology, the cost and the experience. Now, off the coast of Africa is a large island called Madagascar and it's full of weird... You can set up a sequence, record the link in four or five different languages in a matter of minutes. Each production gets state-of-the-art technology and superb images at a fraction of the cost. But the web is more than just a television program. The web's internet site can provide a permanent and global presence even when the television show is off the air. And it adds a whole new dimension. It gives people across the world the opportunity to really interact, share their enthusiasm and put themselves in the picture. Hi, how's it going? Right. right. Let's see if the birdmaster's got an answer for me yet. Hi, Jake. The eldest bird was a sulphur-crested cockatoo who was at least 80 years old. The 
the internet site gives real and immediate involvement to the viewers. Let's ask a question. Well, I like talking to the birdmaster and finding out the things that you really wanted to know. It's better than just sending it on postcards and waiting, waiting weeks for it. I like talking to other children from other schools. Finding out about different places and um, finding out about the animals. But what's more is this particular web reaches right around the world. Hi, my name is Sarah Earhart and I live in Laguna Beach, California. Every summer I visit the Bahamas where I get to swim with and photograph the Atlantic spotted dolphin. With this level of involvement, the project can begin to be driven by the children. The production team can get an idea of what the viewers really want and find those with something to say for future episodes. Now, kids and others have sent material into television programs before, but doing it through the internet represents a whole new kind of relationship between broadcasters and the users of broadcast material. Because, first of all, there's a live type interaction that can happen at the time of the program or later, where people can send in their questions and their videos and have an interaction with one another on the net. Hundreds joined our internet website and sent mail to the Birdmasters Club. Nathan asked how he could get sparrows. We can see programs really benefiting from the sort of material that the kids, in this case, send in. When the program becomes global, we'll get a whole range of material sent in. Observations, audio, video, ideas, and out of that we can make whole new shows in the future. So we can see a benefit from the multimedia element for the viewers of the program as a whole all around the world, whether or not they themselves are on the internet. Now the website is all set to really spring into life and this is what the BBC Multimedia Centre is working on now. This is an interactive CD-ROM with its own website and 3D worlds that children can really explore for themselves. Using this kind of 3D world, viewers can explore the environments they've seen on the television programme and find new ones. Hello, I'm the Birdmaster. Welcome to my very own private island. If you want to, you can click on me and I'll take you somewhere special. Follow me. Hello again. There are lots of people for you to meet here. And lots of In this world, the Birdmaster introduces other characters that represent real children. Here, someone in the US has chosen to be a cat. Hi, I'm Rachel. What's your name? Ben. I live in Santa Rosa, California. Where are you from? Harlow, England. Um, I'm looking for the cuckoo. Can you help me find him? Yeah, sure. Let's go. Each time you visit the site, new things appear, stories develop, there are puzzles, and all kinds of fun things to do. In fact, it's a bit like a virtual nature trail. Along the way, you can pick up information about animals and use it to progress to other worlds. This is just a hint of the kind of unique projects the BBC will be pioneering. And once the ball started rolling, there's no end to the possibilities. Much of the groundwork done for the television programme can be used to open up other media opportunities, such as CD-ROMs, video games and, of course, books, all of which are part of a growing international market. And information gained on the internet can provide a constant update for all media. Remember, the world's getting smaller, the web's getting bigger. Watch it, it'll grow on you. Right. <laughs> Happy surfing. Bye-bye.